And now, live from the 2015 Vancouver International Wine Festival, Anthony Gizmondi and Casey Wilson. This is Tony and Casey's Best of Food and Wine on Sea Isle 650. Welcome back to the Best of Food and Wine. I'm Tony Gizmondi. I'm Casey Wilson. Uh, we've got an incredible guest uh, joining us now. One, the toughest name to say in the room, Chateau de Caraguil. I hope I got that close. Yeah, better, uh, better than my way of saying it. <laughs> better than your way of saying it. <laughs> Our guest is uh, Pierre Gavisson. I had a chance to meet him earlier this week. Fascinating guy. Fabulous wine. So I know you buy your wines. And I think one of the great things about this festival, it's very wine-focused and very principle-focused. Uh, you came to the show. You have a strong connection with Vancouver. Yes, I have to admit my uh, connection is very strong. My wife is from Vancouver. Uh -huh. uh, my best friend moved to uh, Sydney in Vancouver Island. Another one to the North Shore. So, yeah. Wow. I've been, yeah. So, where did you meet your wife? Where in, were you? In Phuket. <laughs> oh, oh. In Phuket, there you go. And where, where are you originally from? I'm from France. Yes. And I live in Hong Kong. I do uh, my main business in Hong Kong in manufacturing and I have a passion for, for wine. So I've been involved in this uh, beautiful estate. I fell in love with it. And uh, here I am. What was your first memory of wine? First memory of wine uh, was um, Chateau Margaux. That was an incredible uh, experience, and uh, I, I felt like it was uh, part of history. I was I was like 19 years old, yes. and uh, that was uh, what uh, gave me the connection to wine. Before I was more like a Coca-Cola kid. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, let's let's uh, we like to take our visitor, our, our listeners, to where you are. So let's describe your home for the winery and what part of France. Where can you transport us to the site? All right, the um, we are in Languedoc, yeah, south of France, and in the Languedoc region, we are in Corbière, which is uh, the biggest uh, wine producing region in um, in in France. The Appalachian, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, the estate is a very large estate, very old estate, about 600 years old. Um, monks, uh, sisters and monks used to produce mm. wine already in the 12th century there. Wherever the monks are, the yeah, wine yeah. is good. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, knew how to, uh, they knew how to make wine, they knew how to have fun yeah. in those days. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the estate stayed the way it is today for mm -hmm. 500 years because mm -hmm. it belonged to one family. And we have about 600 hectares of uh, uh, scrubland, uh, garrigue, as we say it in French, sure. uh, surrounding the vineyard. And vineyard, we have about 136 uh, hectares. And the whole estate is organic. Wow. And has been organic before the time it was fashionable to be organic. To be organic, the, yeah. The previous owner was a bit uh, eccentric. And actually, we hid the fact that we're organic because in france it was not a very good selling yeah. point at all no, no it wasn't yeah 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 well uh you said a great word there garrigue you're yeah. from the south of france i mean it would be great to explain that term because we hear it and we we see it in the wine what what should we know about garrigue and and it's in its importance with the wine yeah garrigue is a uh, scrubland so we talk about uh, small uh, small trees not not higher than this yeah uh, a lot of uh, thyme uh, 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 rosemary, rosemary rosemary yeah um, and um, it's very it's herbaceous and savory i guess yes eh? yeah so you you can taste the garrigue in our in our wine yeah. i think it's a very important signature for of our estate we keep a very uh, uh, important biodiversity in the estate, yep. and you can uh, trace it in in the wine. It's, it seems like on those warm summer days, uh, the oils are released into the air, and somehow they end up in the vineyard on the leaves. I don't know all the, the story, but it, they they do end up in the wine. It, it is true. Yeah, it is true. So Corbière, there there are rules in France, and there are varieties that must be in Corbière. Tell us about the blend of this organic red wine from Corbière. All right, the main varietals that we use in our um, estate or in Corbière are 
Carignan, Syrah, mm -hmm. Grenache, and Mauvergne. Yeah. Uh, 2012 was a blend of uh, Syrah, Carignan, and Mauvergne. Syrah and Carignan are always very, very important uh, varietal for for a state and for wine, and um, they are doing great things in uh, in our region. The wine is in, in just amazing. It's so fresh. It's so uh, it's so alive. I don't know. It's, I'm sure some of that has to do with the organics uh, and a lot to do with the terroir, I would, yes, I would yes. suspect. I think one thing that is very important in our estate is that most of the uh, um, most of the vines have a north sun exposure, so we don't get much sun pounding on the on the vineyards in the late afternoon. Right. So we uh, then we have 300 days of wind per year. Yep. You know the famous tramontane yep. uh, that can blow as uh, more than sometimes 100 kilometers per hour. So it's pretty uh, pretty strong wind. So the, the wind cools down the the vineyards. Yeah. So we have. That allows us to have a good difference between day and night, and um, keeps the acidity in the wine and the freshness in the wine. So, uh, you have a strategy for Canada, or is it just Vancouver, or what, what's happening with your wine in no North America? <laughs> we um, we have a long history with the company Steel Wine mm -hmm. in uh, in Vancouver, which is our first market in North America. Yeah. BC has been uh, um, actually a very good uh, partner for us. Uh, and I think that it is also due to the fact that you're organic and uh, people in British Columbia are very, very sensitive to, to this uh, organic um, aspect of yeah. our Accepting of it. Yeah. 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 They appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, they appreciate the fact that you're organic. And going around, I spent a, a few days in, uh, either in Vancouver Island or here and I understand that organic is something that is not... Um, Eccentric, but it's something that is well rooted in the in the people mind in yeah. BC. Well, in fact, uh, the most organic uh, acreage in Canada is all in British Columbia, in the South Okanagan, and on the island, all the, okay. that stuff. So it's great. Uh, well, we've been tasting the red wine from your property, but maybe the wine that surprised me the most this week, although I'm not surprised at the quality, is the white wine that you uh, brought along. I want to just talk a bit about that. Uh, before I do, I should say that our guest is Pierre Gabasson from Chateau. Caraguil, he's in uh, the south of France in the in the Corbiere region. Uh, the white wine is very interesting and growing a lot in interest here, I think. Well, what's been the reaction at the show to that wine? Yeah, I've been, I've been very surprised because um, people don't uh, expect us to make great white in our region. Yeah. People uh, uh, we are, we are famous for red and uh, we find in this uh, in this white, a lot of minerality, yeah. a lot of freshness. Uh, again, I come back to the fact that we have this sun exp uh, north sun exposure mm -hmm. and uh, the cooling winds. And this is a blend of uh, Roussan, Marsan, and Grenache, white Grenache. Uh, varietals that are not so common here. So I think mm -hmm. it's kind of refreshing to taste something different. Yeah. Um, with a lot of minerality, a lot of uh, citrus fruit um, in it. And uh, yeah, we, we had uh, an incredible response and on this wine. Great in a seafood market like in Vancouver, where there's sure. so, so many interesting kinds of seafood for that wine. Uh, but you weren't surprised by the wine? Sorry, Tony. Yeah. You weren't surprised that you could make a good white wine? No. But uh, to tell you the truth, you know, we. We planted um, quite a, a bit of white uh, a few years ago, about five years ago, and I thought I made a mistake yes. that we planted too many white because we didn't have the market for it, or the people didn't expect uh, us to make great white. Yeah. And actually, I have to say that among all our wine, the one that always sold out are white. <laughs> So, Pierre, you live in Hong Kong. That's a completely other different culture, too, or you spend a lot of time there yep. uh, in the lighting business. Is it a design business for you, too, or does it, does it somehow mesh with wine? Or? Actually, that's a good question. Uh, it's, uh, I'm involved in design, and I think that's the funnest part, funnest of, it. part of it. Yeah. 
Um, but what is good about Hong Kong, it's a place where we have a lot of influence from different places. Uh, we have a lot of Australian wines, Chilean wine, uh, New Zealand wine. Zero so, tax. Zero tax. <laughs> so it's a, it's a great trade place, trading place. Yeah. And I've been exposed to a lot of wines mm -hmm. coming from all over the world, uh, which is not common for wine makers in in France for yeah. example or, or wine yeah, totally. owner yeah yeah so totally get that. in uh, what we do with our wine we try to make a, a very modern expression of our terroir Corbière has been famous to make very robust wine but sometimes a little bit uh, too uh, uh, too, too heavy, strong, maybe, too yeah. heavy. Yeah. Um, so we we work in a very modern way yep. with less extraction. Yeah, great finesse actually. Yes, yes. So we work on the you finesse. Do you sell your wine in Hong Kong and in China? That's right. And yes. was that difficult? Because they always talk about they want the really prestigious labels, and so how did you break into the market? We have a gold label for yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> the same label. <laughs> that always works. <laughs> It is Corbier after all. It's yeah, pretty yeah. prestigious. Yes. Uh, well, Pierre, it's great to catch up with you. I know. I know you've had a pretty good experience at the show. Maybe you'll come back. And uh, well, you're in I Vancouver, anyways, right? You know, uh, it was great being here. I went for a bicycle ride this morning. You did around with, Stanley uh, Park? Yeah. Or? No, we went around the Marine Drive. Yeah. Oh, uh, great. With uh, John Blakely from. Uh, uh, yeah. From, sure. Uh, the restaurant. Uh, Pastis and yeah. the, the Left Bank, yeah. where we had the wine dinner. And Very so, good, yeah. Uh, fantastic place, actually. They, they did, did you they, keep up with him on the bike? Or? He has good legs. Yeah. Okay, so he's a bit older than me, and I uh, <laughs> told him that uh, he sounded uh, much younger than me. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you had a perfect day for it in Vancouver. Yeah, it was beautiful. So I'll, I'll be. So this is to say that I'll be back. Yeah. And um, all those connections make it very easy for me to enjoy my time here. Well, when you come back, come and see us in the studio, and we'll we'll continue the conversation. I will. I will. And Thanks we so want much. to visit you in Hong Kong. Yeah, you're welcome. Even so, <laughs> Pierre Gabasson from Chateau Caraguil. We've been tasting the uh, 2012 Corbier. Really a sensational wine. Sells for songs under twenty dollars, I think, in the market or twenty one. Yeah, tw it's, yeah, twenty one or twenty two. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a giveaway. Just yeah. stock up, get yourself a case, and it'll live for ten years. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank hey, we're you. live you on can. the floor tonight at the Vancouver International Wine Festival. Year 37, we're wrapping up on Saturday night. The crowd is through the door. Uh, biggest night of the year in the wine uh, business in Vancouver. I'm Tony Gismondi. I'm Casey Wilson. We'll be right back. There's lots more still ahead. Live from the 2015 Vancouver International Wine Festival, this is Tony and Casey's Best of Food and Wine on CIL 650.